Hi, I'm Jack Barazzini, and you're listening to The Secrets of Stargate, where we talk about the hidden meanings and deeper layers found in the Stargate movies, TV series, and more. And joining me today are Jeff Haker. Hello, Jeff. Hey, Jack. And Lisa Jones. Hi, Lisa. Hey, Jack. And Victor Lambs. Hey, Victor. Hi, Jack. Today we are discussing the season finale of Season 8 of SG-1, Mobius, Parts 1 and 2. This is uh, it's an episode with a lot, a lot of uh, complicated time travel. I definitely want to dig into all the implications of that. Uh, but we kind of get the the show going back to its roots. We get to see Ra again, uh, which is a lot of fun. We get the flip over helmets. Uh, a lot of references to the both the original movie and the uh, season or the series premiere of SG One. Uh, a lot, a lot of interesting things happen and. Yeah, it was it was a, a good time, and you can definitely tell that I did not have time to put together a full <laughs> synopsis for this, so I was just winging it. <laughs> what are your thoughts on this episode, Lisa? I love this episode. This was so much fun. I, I believe they didn't know if they were going to get picked up for season nine, and so this was created as a potential series finale and part of me really wishes it had been the series finale because i love the way they um really made it an homage from the beginning they gave us lots of comedy i felt like they uh really honored fans they i mean there's so many little nuggets in this one and then um just the comedy they let the stars shine I mean, mm-hmm. you know, watching Michael Shanks and Amanda Tapping and Richard Dean Anderson. Okay, Tilk still just said indeed, and you know, <laughs> yeah. Um, but but the others, they they just had so much fun. And then you, Rodney McKay, and you know, Major Davis, and um, I absolutely loved. It. I just I think I grinned ear to ear watching parts one and two to this episode. Mm-hmm. What about you, Jeff? Yeah, this is one of my favorite episodes of the show. Um, I don't know if it's my favorite. There might be a few more that I like more than this one, but it, it's definitely in my top three or top five. Um, it's yeah, it's so much fun to watch. Um, there's great time travel you get. It's kind of the last hurrah for these characters. I could be wrong, but I I don't know that we see the four of them in a room together in the next couple seasons. I, I know Jack comes back for a couple, but I don't know if he's in the room with it, with everybody. So it's kind of that last hurrah for them. And, and while you, you get them together, it's, you also get them remixed because of course, with the time Mm -hmm. travel, you get different versions, but still the same personalities overall, even, even Teal has the same, you know, stoic personality, even though it's a completely alternate timeline. Um, And yeah, it's just like you said, Lisa, it's so much fun. It's um, it's got great action in it. uh, And, you know, Daniel gets to die again, uh, or a version of him gets to die again. (laughs) So um, I don't know what what his death count is at this point, but (laughs) um, pretty high. And and yeah, it's one of my favorite episodes. And um, and yeah, it's got I was thinking about it. And it's got some interesting time travel implications as we that we can talk about. So what about you, Victor? Yeah, this is a a really good two parter. And like Lisa said, a really good send off uh, for the series and uh, the cast. I was watching it with with my kids and uh, my 11 year old turned me about midway through and said, this is really good. Like <laughs> <laughs> usually, I mean, he likes Stargate, but he also, uh, you know, tends to there were a couple little technical nit- nitpicks with the way that the the Stargate interacted with the dialing computer or, you know, you know the DHD on the puddle jumper and stuff. But mm-hmm. um, but no, it's really good. And it is a lot of fan service for the fans um, written by Malazzi and Molly and. Robert C. Cooper for the second part, both episodes directed by Peter Dalloway. So by people who really understood the series, the characters, and what people wanted to see from a send-off like this. And so we get a lot of really good in-jokes. Um, we get, you know, cager, uh, characters, you know, major and minor showing up uh, t- to be with us in, in the final few episodes of, of the series. And uh, yeah, definitely a, a fan favorite. Everything is is working you know, there were a couple of corners that they had to cut, but that's, you know, completely forgivable. And uh, yeah, really good, really good send off for, for um, Stargate SG-1. I feel like this would be, if you could pick like a handful of episodes to show someone to try to get them into Stargate, this would definitely be in there because it's like quintessential Stargate. It has all the yeah. stuff mm-hmm. that's fun about the show. Um, 
I loved all the callbacks they did. I like that we got to see Kowalski again. That was yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. I wasn't expecting that. I even like that they poked fun at Amanda Tapping's terrible line from the uh yeah <laughs> yes, yeah. So good. reproductive from, organs <laughs> yeah that one like they they hung a lantern on that and called yeah. out how terrible it was which i appreciated <laughs> and i thought the acting in this from michael shanks and amanda tapping was mm -hmm. excellent especially amanda tapping like playing a almost like a like a beaten Belter. down mousy version of herself <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And, and the physical comedy from her too yeah. the way she moved uh -huh. and that's the main thread is that without the discovery of the Stargate in their lives and them joining um, you know SG-1 they weren't able to live up to their, to their full potential because the main time travel paradox here is that the uh, you know they've discovered by looking at an ancient you know engraving carving rubbing of it that there's a uh, ZPM that's you know, been lost in time. And if they can only go back to, you know, 5,000 years, they can find it. And of course they have the time machine that, that, uh, uh, Janice built. And so they, uh, you know, go back in time, but, uh, wind up changing the future as it is, um, in this alternate timeline, Ra, the, you know, revolt against Ra in ancient Egypt is successful, but Ra picks up the Stargate, the Egypt Stargate and takes it with them. And as such, um, earth is safe probably safer than it would be in the main timeline. Oh, right. but, yeah. But, uh, but there's no, there's no Stargate. There's no Stargate program. There's no SGC. There's no SG one. And so as a result, O'Neill, um, certainly, uh, Teal, uh, Jackson and Carter have not lived up to their full potential. And so we get to see what their characters would have been if, uh, you know, it's kind of, a, it's a wonderful life. If, if the Stargate uh, program had never been born, um, <laughs> And so that's, uh, you know, a big chunk of the episode. And then again, uh, what they do when they go, go back to 1955 or, you know, 3000 BC to, to fix things. <laughs> yeah. And I actually, after I watched the episode, I went back and I, so I watched it a couple of times and then I drew out like a diagram of the timeline <laughs> just to make sure I could get it all straight. <laughs> Oh, you're awesome. you're in good company. Peter DeLuise did the exact same thing he said on the commentary as he was, uh, you know, um, directing the episode just to make sure that he had everything uh, straight. Nice. And so I don't know, like I didn't look any of this up online, but from my understanding, the way that the way the time loop works here, our original SG one characters are dead <laughs> and gone, other than Daniel. Well. They're, they're, so this episode <laughs> takes place around the same time as Threads. Right. Mm -hmm. So because, um, and well, it takes place a little bit after Threads, but then kind of loops back into the ending of, the ending of this episode is the ending of Threads, basically. Yeah. So, so no, SG-1 is still preserved, but the future version of themselves in the prime timeline went back in time and died, but. SG SG one is still intact because that happened before they went back in time mm -hmm. and then they don't have to go back in time. But exactly. yes, all of SG one died multiple times in this. Yes. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> both, both the original prime SG one died and then their un you know, unrealized potential versions all died in the past mm -hmm. as well. Yep. But then they went back in time before they left. And so they preserved themselves. Wouldn't that make or it they sent third? They sent the stuff back in time. Sorry, before they left and it, worked well they just they just packaged everything up and so yeah. everybody everybody died it's just that the the sg1 from a month before they went back in time found it and then yeah never went back in time it's like that great joke in um <laughs> bill and ted's excellent adventure where they're trying to get the keys to the police station i think and they're like mm -hmm. well why don't we just go back in time and put them right here and then they just right. reach down and pick them up yeah so yeah, yeah. <laughs> or something exactly. to that effect it's been a while since i've seen it yeah yeah, it's one of those things. If you think about it too hard, mm -hmm. your your head's going to explode. But I, because of you know, for our listeners, the, uh, I, I'm not exactly, I'm not very math oriented, but I believe a Mobius strip is a as a device. It's a it's a shape that loops back in on itself with no break. So yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's looping back in without you know cutting itself off basically. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, it's it it's it's funny to think about because the SG one. It, they were the ones who started the the uprising so if they had never so it's like yeah. 
well, if they'd never gone back, the uprising wouldn't would have failed anyway. So they had to go back and the yeah caused the uprising that <laughs> led to their their current <laughs> selves. So <laughs> yeah, it's if you think about it too hard, it, it it'll hurt your brain. So <laughs> much, yes, yeah. And you couldn't make a Mobius strip with a piece of paper. You just cut it into a strip, and then I know this is difficult to describe on an audio podcast, but you just turn one end one in 180 degrees and then you can tape them together and then if you take a pen and draw you can draw all the way around it without taking the pen off the paper once and cover both sides yeah so i remember i remember as a kid i was very impressed by that <laughs> yeah so they're a little <laughs> too eager to go back in time i think at the beginning I, of this episode but if they didn't they wouldn't have any episode but it's, it's just so much it's just so much fun seeing them get yeah. giddy at the prospect of time travel um, even to the point where they go back and, and, uh, they go back 5,000 years and Daniel sees the pyramids and is like, I knew, I knew that they were built before the fifth dynasty. And, and Carter remarks like, well, do you just want to hold up a newspaper with today's date right. and take a picture? Cause, <laughs> yeah. cause he has the video camera and that's not really going to prove anything because the video footage could have been, you know, for, for many time and stuff. But so yeah. I, I, I just thought that was really funny that, uh, Malazzi and Molly were thinking along those lines. It's, it's, you know. When we when we talked to uh, Joseph Malazzi for our, our episode 100, he did mention that he had watched before he wrote um, Window of Opportunity. He watched every single possible time loop episode mm-hmm. just to make sure that he had considered all the angles. And it was obvious here he'd watched every available, you know, time travel paradox, you know, work of fiction just to make sure that he, uh, you know, accounted for for everything. And, and it really shows um, in, in the care here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. As I was watching, I was thinking, well, if because when they go back in time and get to Egypt and because their whole thing is the jumper, they cloak it, but then it gets covered in a sandstorm. And that's how they <laughs> that's how yeah. they're stuck there. And the whole time yeah. I was thinking, well, what if Jack had just stayed with the ship and just like hovered or whatever, you know, flew it away. But then as she wouldn't want to have started the uprising and, mm-hmm. you know, Ra would have still either been there still, in the you know, all the way in the future or that upri- some uprising would have failed anyway and would have led to the gate being gone so they had the whole that was, was like they could have fixed it you know they could have not had this happen but then they they wouldn't have had the story anyway so i did like how yeah. they kind of solved that within itself already yeah and it and it is cool we get to meet the ancient egyptians and they're a lot like the abadosians mm-hmm. um and we get to see Ra again as well too although it's not jay davison um you know it's it's uh actually lieutenant ford's body double Rainbow Sun Frank's body double wearing the big uh, Ra outfit and stuff. And uh, Jack initially just Mm -hmm. wants to shoot him uh, and say, you know, save me the time, uh, 5,000, you know, save me uh, having to do it 5,000 years from now, um, which he did in the uh, the original movie. But of course, that would uh, uh, affect the timeline too much. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and that was fun that they went all the way back to the movie rather than just start at Children of the Gods. Which we did. We went to we went to Chulak, but they went all the way back to the movie, which I really love to see. This is a recreation of it to remind mm-hmm. us where everything came from. Yeah, and I forgot to mention we do hear of Catherine Langford in mm-hmm. this episode. That's kind of what starts things off. Um, yeah, shopping online. Are you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no, Catherine Langford has died uh, off screen, and so. Um, Jackson goes to the funeral, meets uh, her very attractive niece, oh, yes. who gives her who gives him the actual movie prop from the Stargate movie, you know, the Eye of mm-hmm. Ra movie prop. Um, and then she says, "Oh yeah," and, and she had a few other things for for you. And that's the last we see of her. And that's kind of the joke <laughs> there too is that she completely drops out. And the next thing we cut to Siler basically leading a a parade of uh, you know hand trucks out of <laughs> Doctor Jackson's office, and he has been bequeathed pretty much uh, Elizabeth's entire collection. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that's what Jack said to him. Yeah. Shopping online again, are we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, I forgot the niece's name, Sabrina, I want to say, but I don't know if that's right. But she and Jackson, Daniel Jackson, again, like, I just like, you know, it's like, how many times can he die in the series? And how many girls, women, you know, is he going to try to pick up? It's like, he got two in this episode because they just stare lovingly into each other's eyes. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I was, I was surprised that nothing came of that because it really seemed like they were setting, setting them up. Well, they did jump ahead a little bit, right? True. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But, uh, 
Yeah, and so that's what leads them to discover that the ZPM mm-hmm. uh, may have been buried back then, and um, you know they're they're eager to go back in time. But there's just a lot of like really good visual humor in this, um, mm-hmm. which we'll get to when we get to the alternate timeline stuff. There's just a lot um, going on there, and I do like the way the episode cuts. You know, we're following SG One as they go back in time, and suddenly they've realized that they have no plan. <laughs> for for leaving because they're as as you say the the puddle jumper has been discovered rock can't activate it um so their best bet is just to kind of hide uh for a little while and then we immediately cut to alternate future dr jackson teaching an english as a second language class <laughs> in some community <laughs> college <laughs> a very very full uh esl class yeah, yeah. Definitely confusion there with introduction and weather, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's got his uh, his long stringy hair back and his glasses. Yes. Uh, very different from the character we've come to know. <laughs> mm-hmm. I really wanted to watch this episode with my 18-year-old because she has always thought Daniel Jackson was the hottie in the show. And uh, I really, I don't know if she's ever seen this episode. And so I was like, I really need to show this to her so that she yeah. can, the contrast, right, of yeah. uh, Daniel Jackson we've known. And, and uh, but, but no, she did, she's, she's at college. <laughs> ah. <laughs> and then uh, Major Davis comes in and he's got a mustache. That's his yes. big. Uh, so there are like s- slight tweaks to the characters. Major Davis has a mustache. It's very subtle, but Hammond, in addition to only having one star, has mm-hmm. a little scar. Mm-hmm. that oh, okay. uh, Peter DeLuise, I, I just thought he was like cutting himself shaving or something, you know, or, but yeah. Peter DeLuise said, no, it was intentional, but he wished he'd made it like a lot bigger or something. Mm. Oh yeah. But I guess he didn't go full eye patch, which would have been the other thing. I noticed it, but that I didn't yeah. know if, uh, Donna Davis had, himself or had, yeah, had, had some like car accident, you know, since yeah. we'd last seen him or something. Or got um, hit in the face with a branch while you know, trimming. Yeah. Him. And then yeah. when we first see, uh, Jack O'Neill, his hair is not gray. Oh yeah. When we see him on the boat, his his yeah, hair is boat. not as gray. Yeah. And then we see Samuels, who yes, is the Major one who Samuels. came and saw him in the pilot uh in the pilot, right? It was Samuels. Yeah. And so now it's Samuels again who comes and finds him. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, I like I like Samuels. I wish we would have seen more of them more of him, but it is kind of a treat seeing him uh here again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then we get to know that the president is not Hayes. Hayes. <laughs> Yeah. It is Kinsey. Kinsey. Yeah. Kinsey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think our final reference to Kinsey <laughs> That's that, that yeah. was here. So, <laughs> yeah. And it, he but finally we, got to be president. And I think this yeah. was the final appearance. I know there's a, there's at least one episode with with General Hammond, but it's I think it's a very like you kind of you see sh- images of him, but it's like it's almost like news footage of him in a in an episode in season nine or ten. I can't remember, but mm-hmm. I think this was kind of maybe the final speaking performance that we have of him or like final like in, at least in hammond. The, i'm sorry <laughs> we get puppet hammond oh puppet hammond. That's true. <laughs> yeah That's true. <laughs> oh yeah yeah um but no yeah it it is and and in this timeline sam is still brilliant but um you know deeply very put insecure. upon <laughs> deeply insecure her, her boss is stealing all of her ideas and amanda tapping kind of dials the like nerdy librarian, like eighties Molly Ringwald character up to about 11 or 12 and like just cranks off the breaks it and just yanks the knob yeah. off and just kind of leaves it there, which is fun. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, funny things there, but at the same time, you're like, like, you know, is, is Felger back or what's going on here? You know, it's just like, it's, and you, you, if you, if you didn't know, I mean, man tapping has a, has a history with, as a comedian, like in, yeah. in comic works and stuff. So it was great to see her just really lean into it, both both the way they had the character written, but also, like I mentioned earlier, her physical humor. I mean, you just watch like when she, I, I can't remember what it was, she like touched somebody and then like hurled her hand back and like put it down. And I mean, it was everything. The, her, the whole way that she uh, moved was different than regular Sam. So it was even so even when she takes her glasses off you know in the second episode you still know it's alternate reality sam Mm -hmm. yeah not to get ahead of us but i think the funniest moment in the episode for me is when 
alternate, re, uh, you know, alternate future Sam and Daniel go to visit alternate future Jack on his boat to try and convince him to, to, you know, come back to the SGC with them. And he doesn't want to talk to them. So they pay for an hour on his boat, but because they're on his boat, he makes them wear life jackets and they, they don't state any of this in the dialogue. They just cut to the both of them, like just sitting there in their dorky life jackets, even though the boat's still moored, they have yeah. to wear the life jackets. And, uh, and you know, Jack won't join them. And so they get up to leave and Amanda tapping starts to take off her life jacket while still on the boat. And Jack, you know, and she, so she steps onto the dock, takes off her life jacket over her head and her hair goes, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and she just leaves it like that and just <laughs> stares. And I guess every take they did, she was able to get her hair to, to do that with the life jacket. Nice. And it's, it, and none of this is in dialogue. It's all just completely visual mm-hmm. humor ha- happening in the background that they just, you know, put in Mm -hmm. on top of the script and it's just wonderful. Mm -hmm. And Jack's boat, of course, is named, is named Homer. Another, there's a couple of references in this one. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And he's a lot more, uh, a lot more, um, uh, you know, Chris Farley or, or Bill Murray. He is a lot more, you know, he's like a a lot more Midwestern, I guess. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll say there's more of the Chicago in him at this point. Yeah. He found a Midwestern, uh, really a Minnesota kind of accent. I would say it sounded Minnesota to me. A little more A. Is this character from Chicago? I think so. Well, originally in one of the um, early episodes, season one, they said Chicago. But throughout the the episode, they've more talked about Minnesota because that's where his lake house is and his cabin and all that. Well, he talked about wanting to go see the Cubs play. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think Chicago is supposed to be where he's, or at least he's, you know, may, may hail his home. But I think, yeah, I think his, he doesn't live over in that region anymore, but. Yeah. And that gives us another joke where he first wants to use the time machine to see the Cubs win the world series. And when Sam says, no, we're going to go back 5,000 years, he's like, can we go back a a shorter distance of period, like to 1908, for example, which is when the Cubs did beat the Detroit Tigers in the world series. So. Yeah, and at, at the time of this filming, that was like the most recent time they'd won the World Series, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think so. I think, I think so. Yeah, I think they've won since then. Yes, a couple. Not a sports yeah. guy. So. <laughs> I just <laughs> happened to be in Chicago that uh, at that time when they were in the World Series. That's the only reason I know. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> they broke the curse. <laughs> yeah. So and I uh, like to when we when we get back to Egypt. Um, I like that we get to see the big like hawk helmets that the Jaffa oh, wore yeah. in the movie. Yes. And we hadn't or, seen or as Gary Jones, time. who did the uh, commentary, called them the the big falcon helmets. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we may have, didn't we see some of those in the early seasons of SG One because it's the Horus mm-hmm. Guards. They're like Ross family, so like Ross' son. Um, I forget his mm-hmm. name. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Tilk wore one in Secrets. Didn't he? Yeah, and I think Herrer had the yeah had Herrer the so helmet. Mm-hmm. Of, yeah, we didn't see a lot of the CG though. This the the you know five seconds of CG as the helmet yeah. comes on. We didn't see a lot of that. And you notice they only have two of the Falcon helmets for people to wear. Um, yeah, everybody else doesn't get one. But no, that's cool. I do like what they did with Ra. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's 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 really nice. Um, there too. I liked how quickly we kind of got into it. Like we went yeah. from, you know, SGC, Catherine dying. Here's what we got to do. Okay, time travel. Now we're in Egypt. Now we're stuck. Yeah. And then you're like, wait a minute. You're looking at your watch going, this is really kind of early. What's going to happen? And all the times that Carter has made that speech, no, no, we're just going to have to stay here and like live it out and we can't like 1969 remember like we can't make any changes yep. we can't do anything and here it actually happens <laughs> yeah yep <laughs> um and and jackson's plan is of course to uh he recalls that there is a a dig that happened about a month or so before they that was discovered a month or so before they left that was not far from where so his plan is to bury the zpm there the videotape that they're making that contains crucial information but not all the crucial information um, that future them will need bury it in canopic jars so that it's preserved. Even the magnetic tape, which Peter Deloise acknowledged would, <laughs> would not survive for 5,000 years. Um, but, uh, and then, and then it would be discovered by SG one in, in the future. Only it's not uh, SG one that 
discovers it because there is no SG-1 in the future. Right. But there is still a Rodney McKay in the future, so we're, we're grateful for that. <laughs> and he's not allergic to lemon, Citrus. apparently. In this time. Nope, yeah. not anymore. Yeah, one of the scenes they were actually going to have him like peeling and eating an orange to start the scene and stuff to show that he was not. But they made they threw in that line about how much yeah. he loves lemon chicken. It's nice. nice. So. But they made him just as slimy and creepy as they did in the beginning, where yeah. he he hits on Carter and and is all kinds of. I don't know. I guess just forward and rude and just <laughs> condescending and yeah. all the things that we hated about him that he grew out of. <laughs> Although ironically, because this would be at this point the same time that uh, he should be on Atlantis. So, mm-hmm. yep. I guess he never, yeah. never had the chance to grow out of it in this timeline. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he's their expert, remember? Yeah. Yeah, so the big conundrum here is that Earth doesn't have a Stargate because Ra took it with them, so they can't go to Chulak to get Teal'c, and apparently they need Teal'c to go back in time. They can't just go back in time <laughs> w- without Teal'c for some reason, but because Teal'c's on the tape. And uh, and so they know because they find a second tablet that somebody has written in a non, uh, you know, a, a very obscure Egyptian dialect has written talking about a second gate in the land of ice which they surmise to be at Antarctica, but they have no idea where until I think this is kind of a cool thing. They've been trying to dial the gate on the, the uh, puddle jumpers or gate ship as they call it here. Um, DHD. And of course nothing's happening, but Sam figures out that there would be seismic activity in Antarctica every time the gate is dialed, which I think is, isn't how they found O'Neill yes. and solid dudes or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That so, is how they found him. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, that was kind of cool because the other conundrum is that, um, Hammond, while grateful to uh, Daniel and Sam for their help, doesn't really want to keep them on because they've kind of, you know, fulfilled their purpose. And, and they're uh, untrained yeah. nerds. Yeah, yeah, untrained nerds. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> but but we do get uh, to see at the end of the the first half the 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 uh, Antarctic Gate being lowered into uh, the mm-hmm. Cheyenne Mountain Complex, which was. All CG. The actual gate prop was still in place. They just digitally removed it and then lowered oh. the CG gate down to where it it is, and then just you know didn't remove it anymore digitally once That's they got cool. it into place. Yeah. And this is the uh, the technical thing that my son noticed is why if they're using the DHD on the puddle jumper, does it still need to spin the gate using the <laughs> SGC's <laughs> dialing program? <laughs> it should just activate the gate. But I don't know. Eh, um, visual it, it, visual yeah. effect. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it needs the, the mechanical spinning. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's an, it's, it's an, round. It should spin. Yeah. It's an ancient jumper and the, the, and it doesn't have the DHD like most stargates in the in this galaxy have, so maybe that's why. That's true. Just trying to <laughs> just trying to yeah. hit canon it somehow. We're just yeah. lucky they they could talk to each other, right? Like the, the gate and the puddle jumper worked. Yeah. Because it's, it's just from different blue, it's just ancient Bluetooth, just in, yeah. uh, auto sync <laughs> yeah. to your it's like car plus DHD. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did yeah. really like watching um, Daniel Jackson and Carter try to figure out how they were going to get on this mission. Like, yeah, how to not get sent home. And and when they put that NDA in front of them, that was one of my favorites because they put an NDA in front of, or Hammond does, puts it in front of Daniel and Carter and says, like, you need to sign this for us to talk to you. And and Daniel starts to ask questions and Carter's just like, okay. And she signs yeah, it really yeah. fast. Yeah. <laughs> What's my life with is that terrible. Is... Let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> You're free to leave if you don't sign it. And she's tired yeah. of her, her day jobs. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a lot of fun watching them come together and like, but we're on the tape. But we're on the tape. And, yeah. yeah. And then slowly seeing like their confidence come through to assert themselves in this yeah, reality. It would make sense to bring Daniel at least because he could yeah. he can do the archaeological stuff. Sam on future nerd Sam, I don't know. You know, she would <laughs> I don't know what her purpose on the mission would be, I guess, other than scientists to maybe fix something. But mm-hmm. I do like how they say Jack has he has a gut feeling um, and that's why he's bringing them. So, because, yeah. you know, link through time somehow he he knows yeah. that he'll need them. Did you notice when they were all able kitted, to convince them? Yeah. Yeah. When they're all kitted up to leave and they all have the hard hats on like on the uh, yeah. pilot and they I forget who it was turned to Jack and says, why aren't you wearing this hat? 
<laughs> and he's got a yeah. baseball cap on. And yep. and I don't know if you I don't know if we ever talked about it or noticed, but throughout the whole series, um, Richard Dean Anderson didn't wear the standard hat. He wore a baseball cap. He did not wear the military issued even baseball cap that they all wear. So he got his own special one. So yep. I'm assuming that was a reference to the fact that he never wore the same hat as the rest of them. Yeah, hats were a really big thing for Richard Dean Anderson from the commentary uh, when mm -hmm. Peter Delavise was talking. And then when we we later uh, meet Apophis and uh, Peter Williams is wearing this like really huge like miter cap. Um, and the reason for that was because Peter Williams at this point, who's Jamaican, had had grown out of a huge afro. <laughs> And wouldn't so the little skull cap thing wouldn't and they wouldn't shave it off just for like, you know, the two lines of dialogue he has here. So uh -huh. and so they they said, Well, okay, we'll just build this hat that'll cover your afro. Um <laughs> so that's, that's awesome. what we get there. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> but um yeah, so O'Neill uh, is is convinced uh off screen to join uh the mission, takes uh Daniel and Sam along because they're on the tape. And um, they go off to Chulak and are, you know, immediately captured by one of those stun grenades, which, uh, which they have not encountered before because, um, you know, they have not encountered any of yeah. this before. Yeah. You've never been off world. <laughs> yeah. And I do like how uh, at one point uh, when they're on Chulak, Carter mentions that she doesn't like guns, which mm -hmm. she has no experience with that in this timeline. And alternatively, she's blown up sons. So, <laughs> yeah, well, and they, yeah. he asked her about guns and she, she says something like, I don't, I don't like guns. And, uh, Jack O'Neill says, well, neither do I, which I assumed was a callback to, um, Charlie. MacGyver because he, he would oh, yeah. never shoot anyone on MacGyver. They didn't use guns. Yeah. They always made it creative. And I'd read something that Richard Anderson doesn't, doesn't really doesn't like guns. Um, but then later she says she likes explosives much better. Yeah. 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 And, and the story for that is, it. um, <laughs> Any yeah, rocket, unless yeah. the kind of rocket is when, if I'm getting it right, when Richard Dean Anderson was a child, he and some of his friends, and there's a MacGyver episode that where this takes a darker turn, but he and a bunch of his friends were playing around with his gun, and like one of his friends shot a bird or something, mm -hmm. and the bird died, and so at that point he's like, eh, I don't like this these gun things. In the MacGyver episode, it's he and his bunch of friends as a kid are playing around, and one of them like shoots another kid who dies and stuff. And then we fast forward to, you know, um, Stargate where his son Charlie is playing with his service pistol and, and shoots himself. So it's kind of a thread through Richard Dean Anderson's life and the projects he's involved with. Um, but of course, uh, that wouldn't make for a very good action adventure show if he had to continuously uh, knock people out without shooting them or something like he did on MacGyver. Especially uh, like a military base show. <laughs> yeah, he could, you know rig up some baking soda and, and vinegar in a two liter bottle and, you know, <laughs> knock out the Jaffa that way or something. <laughs> um, but it's, it's cool to see, uh, Jay, uh, Akavon again oh, as, yeah. uh, as Kowalski. I really missed him. You know, <laughs> he's probably died almost as many times on the show as, as Daniel. <laughs> and he's only been in how many episodes? Like four, <laughs> like, like four episodes and he dies every episode pretty right. much. So, Unless he does yeah, one so coming up that he that this that a version of him doesn't die. So <laughs> that's true. No, is it? There is another one. Yeah, there's one of there's like another alternate universe one in nine oh, or I ten. I can't remember that. Oh, I remember oh nice. He shows up again. Awesome. So he finally makes yeah. it out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> doesn't get the back of his head sliced off with the gate. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> or or die in the alternate uh, mirror universe or anything uh -huh. like that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. Yeah. So now we're on, we're, we're on Chulak, which at least we're not in the sand dunes anymore. And, um, they were shooting this around the time they were shooting the, uh, the defiant one, the, uh, Atlantis mm. episode where they were, um, and the sand dunes here are actually, uh, on the property of a cement factory. So they use the mm. sand in their cement. And so there's every year <laughs> less and less of it as they, you know, um, and so right off frame, uh, is basically the factory and, you know, the trees and the road and everything. And I guess for, um, Samantha or Amanda tapping show Earthsea, they had built this, uh, sand horseshoe, um, you know, which is where we get, kind of get the mountains that you can see behind me. And it's, mm -hmm. you know, you know, maybe, a not even 180 degree horseshoe. And if you 
filmed too much to the left or right, you'll see actually the cement factory. And there's a couple <laughs> times where the they do a crane shot and they pan up and they hold up for just a frame or two too long. And you can see like the Vancouver trees in the background. You can see the road <laughs> and stuff. So it <laughs> spoils the illusion a little bit. But they were, um, Peter Deloise really was creative in how he shot basically this really little area and you can see trees in, in the background of a, of, of a number of shots, how he shot this, uh, you know, small area of sand to look like it was this, uh, you know, big, huge ancient Egypt, uh, set. Yeah. He did well with it. Cause I didn't, it was yeah. totally, totally convincing to me. Yeah. And you know, Chulak is just the, the nature preserve that they usually, uh, shoot at. And, I don't know if it was exact. I think they had to rebuild the prison set. I don't know if that was the same prison set mm-hmm. from uh, uh, Ch- Children of the Gods or Serpent of the Gods or whatever it was called. Um, I was wondering about that because it looked yeah. very. Yeah. I don't know if it was exact because I didn't go back and compare. But I went, actually said that to my husband. I said, I wonder if they've had this in like a storage facility. Do they keep all of their old sets or did they have to recreate it for only those few scenes? You know? Yeah, I think probably they have like the big sound stage, and maybe they just brought if they had you know the bars and stuff they the walls, could bring yeah. those out or something. But um, and once again, they're trying to convince Tilk that uh, they you know we know that you know the Gould are false gods, and you know <laughs> come join our merry band of rebels. Yeah, Daniel's speech to Tilk is just like just like a classic Daniel awkward Daniel speech of trying yeah. to convince the alien, the non human, or the non earthling of this is what you need to do and you need to join us because you're from an, another timeline. You're, you're, you were one of our friends and on this tape. And if you, if you bring me the camera, I'll show you. <laughs> it was great. Our 5,000 year old camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Batteries that work. <laughs> I, I did like how they said they had to adapt a cable to charge it though. Back at the SGC, you know, they, we found this camera and it, you know, we understand the principles, but it doesn't use any charge. So, like everything else is identical except like the charging standard that the Sony DV camera uses. It uses a different, you know, port on the charging adapter or something. It does sound like a Sony camera from around this time, though, to be fair. If you have three Sony cameras, they have three different chargers, uh, three different recording mediums as, uh, as well. Yeah, so it doesn't go very well. And uh, he, uh, Teal'c is, uh, takes him before Apophis and... Um, and, uh, you know, the Apophis does the little hand device, the thing on his head and seemingly returns, um, Daniel back to the cell where we don't get to see blurred vision Daniel there. So that might be a, a clue because previously everything that Daniel's looked at, they've shot through, through, you know, it's, it's all out of focus because Daniel doesn't have his glasses on, yeah. which was a uh, callback to the movie where every time James Spader didn't have his glasses on and looked at something, they shot it, you know, really blurry and stuff. Mm-hmm. Also Scooby Doo, they do that, but, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. At this point, Teal has seen the video, is convinced that you know the Jaffa could be free, and has brought the weapons and stuff back to. Um, they're not really SG one at this point, but the you know the Air Force personnel that are there, um, and they escape, and they're running down the path to the gate. And we get the Teal pops out to meet them and shoots Daniel Jackson, which yeah. We we quickly find out is not actually Daniel Jackson. It's a <laughs> raw it's so, old. Yeah, yeah. So it was Apophis in Daniel Jackson's body. Is that it was just a gold? Yeah, I think it was just another. Yeah, they had they have spares lying around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was pretty good because then when his eyes glow, you know, they're all like, "Wait a minute!" And then his eyes flashed, and then like, "Oh, you know," because you forget that they haven't seen all of this. You yeah, know, it, yeah. It, it's like a reminder to you that they're encountering all this for the first time. So that was kind of cool. Yeah. And Kowalski, you know, they, they run to the puddle jumper gate ship and Kowalski has taken out the other, uh, you know, uh, red shirt that's with yeah. them is killed. Um, and they get in and of course they don't know that the puddle jumper can cloak. Uh, and so they're flying <laughs> they're around, awesome. they're being blasted. <laughs> they're being blasted by <laughs> death gliders. Um, they're not going to make it to the gate and their only recourse is to, go back 5,000 years into the past uh, to escape the planet um, and, and head to earth uh, where they quickly find out that, you know, the reason why the future has changed is because, you know, they need to make it so that when the revolt against Ra happens, the Stargate stays on earth. And they have this really cool plan about how they're going to basically 
tether the Stargate to the puddle jumper and fly away with it. And you're thinking, this is going to be really cool to see. I really want to see like the gate attached to the puddle jumper as they fly off with it. And like, you know, they're being chased by Raj ships and like none of that happens at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd forgotten if, that, if you actually see it. And then I was watching, I was like, oh, I, and that was, that no, was maybe the don't. one disappointing thing is not getting to see that. But yeah. Cause, cause what does happen is, um, you know, uh, alternate Sam and an alternate Jack, because as it turns out, Prime Jack and Sam have been killed in in one of the earlier failed attempts at the revolt, and uh, Prime Teal'c as as well, and only Prime Daniel is left with uh, uh, you know the uh, oh uh, Katep, who is played by Alessandro Giuliani, who we've seen on the show before, not as Katep, but and so they're getting ready to to launch the actual revolt against Ra, and they have some really cool stores of weapons and stuff built up, which I thought was really cool. Like just seeing like all the prop, you know, Zat guns and yeah. staff weapons and stuff. That was really neat. Yeah. It was, it was funny when they got back to the village or when they go into the village for the first time and they do, they may actually make a reference of, they probably don't speak English. And then Katep just comes up and says, hello. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we had a feeling you'd be back. Yeah, so Katep takes them to the underground bunker, shows them all the stuff, and you know they have this big plan. But first, they need to get to the, you know, to the to the puddle jumper, and uh, sparks fly once they once they get out there. At first, I thought they were setting it up for a, a Sam Daniel ship, because Sam does say that she prefers Daniel, and um, you know Jack kind of does the Mister Furley or Mister Roper thing from Three's Company about Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> briefly <Wow. laughs> which fortunately they don't dwell on and uh and then it looks like they're they're certain doom because the uh the jaffa find the puddle jumper after it you know fades in and out of existence um uh and start blasting it which is is going to be you know per a uh, certain doom for for uh jack and and sam and the puddle jumper and that's that's all that happens in the puddle jumper as far as i'm concerned because <laughs> Daniel's not there. <laughs> Nothing else happens with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. I love it when he says, uh, what is it? He, he said a, something about, he called Carter hot. You yeah, know, someone yeah. who looks like you hot. And she just yeah, about chokes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Cause he's saying he, she thinks he's going to insult her, like calling her uh -huh. nerd or something. He's like someone. So, so what hot? And she like does the cough choke and, <laughs> Jack has the Gyat Riz <laughs> or whatever. <I> don't. <laughs> yeah. No, no cap. No cap. He's, he's, he's finna. Uh, I don't know something, but, uh, yeah. So, um, they're, they're, they're going to be certainly killed, uh, until, and, you know, Teal runs up and says, runs into the Jaffa and says, no, you don't realize all Jaffa can be free. And he's called In Shoha English. one. Yeah, in English. Yeah, which they did catch on the commentary track. That like, why is Teal talking to them in English? But but he already, I guess, he knew English on Tulak, so I guess. The... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the Jafar so Teal English. Let's yeah. go with that. Yeah, and so he runs up, and then and then all of a sudden, you know, all of the revolting, uh, you know, Egyptians, um, jump up from behind their their sand dune, holding their weapons, going rah. And actually, like considering it's one of those things where they take the twenty extras and they all jump up, and then you know Peter Deloise tells them to move further, further on down the dune, and they film that, and then you know composite it all together so the twenty extras look like you know two or three hundred. It looks really good. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know they're standing out in basically the slurry pile of a cement factory. <laughs> all you know, and it's it looks really good, and the the day is saved, and we don't get to see the Stargate tied to the puddle jumper i guess because they don't need to anymore they just bury it <laughs> would have been fun yeah yeah and then up uh, you know the alternate timeline yeah uh, you know jack sam and teal along with the main timeline daniel have to basically hang out there until they die of old <laughs> age i guess which yeah i wonder if like sam and jack had kids you know of or course. something I that's yeah. what that's what the sequel thing is about right the reboot yeah yeah, the reboot is <laughs> their descendants from five thousand yeah. years ago. The, the lost line of like, <laughs> yeah, Sam and Jack. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, one of the original lineage. 
I like this yeah. episode. This could this could work. Yeah. This new show. Yeah. yeah. You have the ancient gene. <laughs> <laughs> we have to go to the lost world inside the center of the earth to find okay. them because that's where they live. Think about how technologically advanced they are because yeah. they've had all of this knowledge passed down through five thousand years that just you know, yeah. Stargate the Lost World. <laughs> 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 Good work. Yeah. There might Thank be some you. inbreeding issues at that point. But. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And so then we, uh, you know, cut back to, you know, third timeline SG1. <laughs> They're watching the second timeline SG1 on the tape. <laughs> or it could have been the first. It, it's uh, heavily yeah. implied it's the second one, but if the batteries had run out, I don't know how they would have, you know, made a new tape, but they could charge um, it in a like, puddle jumper. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're, they have those they have those fiber optic power cables that can just plug it right in. I assumed it was the same original tape. That's like what they I didn't put it back in a new yeah. job. Like it it just yeah. So it's ten thousand years old now? Uh, oh, that's yeah. right. If they no. or or if, no, the, the camera <laughs> stayed stayed in the past. Yeah. Oh well, that's it's, what I'm it's saying. Kind of so a, yeah. It's kind of a glitch to get infinite camcorders as well as infinite puddle jumpers. <laughs> Yeah, puddle jump. Yeah, because if you take the puddle jumper back and then you go to the planet where Janus left it, it would probably still be there, I think. And then you could send it back in time, and you have two back in time. But then in the future, you could still go back to Janus's planet and get it. And you have this glitch where you can get just infinite puddle jumpers that way, and huh. camcorders. Yeah, I don't know. It might work. <laughs> um, Let's try well, it. let me know when you try it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, it's, yeah, and so. <laughs> System lords hate him for this one trick. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like you know, you 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 know, pick up the item and then you save your game and then you reset and then it's it responds and then you just keep you know getting infinite items that way. But um, but yeah, so now they have a CPM which will mm-hmm. come in handy at the beginning of the next season of Atlantis. Yeah, and this and this episode ends at the same place that Threads did. The very nice before. oh yes because yeah. they um with the same it? shot exact same shot it's all the same except for there's a fish jumping in the pond with no fish because right before they go to the lake um they're saying did anything change right did anything change you know colonel does your fish still have no you know have no i mean does your pond still have no fish in it and he's like oh, everything's the same and then they get there and there goes the fish jumping in the water. It's close yeah, enough. This yeah, reminded me of a, yeah. of a Simpsons episode. I think the first Simpsons episode I saw was one of the Halloween ones where Homer goes back in time yeah. and he repeatedly has to like try to change the timeline and he eventually gets to one where like everything's almost the same except his family eats with their like have lizard tongues, but he's like, eh, close enough. And <laughs> so I, I wonder if they were directly referencing oh, that. It was, it was a, it was a direct reference. Okay. Peter oh. Louise said on the commentary that like, yeah, this was a direct reference to the Simpsons episode where, okay. you know, Homer says eh, close enough. And so at the end, Jack uh, says, you know, close enough. You know, <laughs> there are no fish in my pond. That's one thing I do know. And then he gets back and there's fish in his pond, but mm-hmm. yeah. So that's a great way to end it. You know, things mm-hmm. aren't, you know, it's a slightly different timeline, but it's close enough. And, we end on a really great, um, you know, mm-hmm. we're kind of back in sync now. Well, we saw the end of Threads. Um, it's hard for me to remember a couple of weeks ago when we did that. But <laughs> we we talked about how that was a really, it almost seemed like a wrap-up episode, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so it is funny that then the actual season finale, which possibly had been the se- series finale, you know, when they filmed it, that um, they ended it in the exact same shot, the exact same way. So it was... <laughs> Very well done. Yeah. I mean, the only difference is now they have a ZPM, which they can't use, but can be yeah. used by the Atlantis expedition and stuff. Yeah. And and we do start this episode with them talking about, and presumably this would have been before threads happened, talking mm-hmm. about the Daedalus and how, mm-hmm. you know, it's a more advanced version of the Prometheus because the Asgard systems were integrated in the design from the beginning and stuff. So we'll definitely see that uh, uh, come in as well. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of cool foreshadowing there too. Well, it's funny because at the end of Threads, you know, we end Threads with the Jaffa are all free, Anubis is gone, the replicators are destroyed, you know, and you're like, remember where it was like, okay, what's next? Like, what do we do next? It's not even the end of the season yet. Like, what's left? You know, there's some system lords, but nothing else. And so this was a fabulous way to have a two-part episode when you don't really have anything left to fight. Yeah. Yeah. 
And considering that this is the last time Jack is a main character on the show, mm-hmm. like this is kind of the end of the SG one. Yeah. You consider the next two seasons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Next two seasons are like bonus seasons. Yeah. Are they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll find out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's oh yeah, that's right. I'm gonna get sick before it, before. We <laughs> I only have a couple more weeks on the show. I'm sure there's some <laughs> some uncut gems, you know, or some hidden gems in in the episodes that, at the time, we were just. So when when season nine and ten of this, you know, SG one, we were like watching like Prime Atlantis. I forget mm-hmm. if Battlestar Galactic was still on. Yep. You know, Star Trek. Well, Enterprise. I was just wrapping up, but it was it was um. There was a lot of like sci-fi TV, and so I think it you know may have led us to led me to judge nine and ten of SG One a little <laughs> more harshly, just because there was we there was like a you know an embarrassment of riches of sci-fi television. So maybe with kind of the the lens we have now, um, you it know, won't look so it, bad. It, yeah. <laughs> see, I enjoy nine and ten, so I'll I'll have yeah. to <laughs> see if I see if it how it holds. I I rewatched it not that long ago in the last couple of years, and I. I still uh-huh. enjoyed it. So not as much, I will say, but, but yeah, I, I do like nine and 10, but it's kind of the problem of the reboot is like, who will they fight? Cause they fought the Ori and mm-hmm. you know, yeah. what's, <laughs> what's next after that. So, um, I have so. to be honest. I, I, I don't think I've watched nine and 10 in over a decade. So, cause I, I tried to yeah. avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see what happens. Maybe I will be converted. Maybe I'll be like, Oh my gosh, it really wasn't bad. I'll just compare it to Star Trek Discovery and I'll have a much better <laughs> opinion. It'll be of it. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> they definitely don't talk about their feelings as much as they do on Discovery. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Automatically better. <laughs> yeah. They still don't go to therapy either. So it's <laughs> Does the Stargate have to go to therapy at one point? <laughs> yeah. Because that actually happens. And Maybe we should send going more through me all therapy. the time. You know, how does he think that makes me feel? <laughs> It's not like every time they go through the Stargate, like they have to kill a tardigrade or something. <laughs> oh the Stargate network is the is the mycelial network, so <laughs> yeah. they take place in the same universe. <laughs> oh no! Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, just think if they ever reboot it. That's what we could get. Yeah, exactly. that's what makes me afraid. Yeah, we still yeah. have Infinity to do. We've not done that yet. Infinity, yeah, and universe too. So, yep, yep. <laughs> Again, I feel a cold coming on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've only seen universe once, and I that guess we'll have to watch it again at some point. <laughs> it, Though I know a lot of people who loved universe. Yeah, I do know a lot of people who loved universe, but they were also people who didn't watch SG One. Yeah. So, we'll see. Hmm. I've only seen the first episode of Universe and I was not impressed. So Yeah, it it you have to watch it midway through season two before it really starts to pick up. But like the last five episodes. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And it's it's like, whoa, this is like really good. And then it's like, nope. Yeah. But you'll never guess what this episode was called in French. So it's a uh, Ooh. infinity. This, this is uh, a trick question. Yeah. Retour verse. Le future or return to the future. Yeah. <laughs> Back to the future parts one and two. Yeah. That's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. That yeah. is so awesome. It would have been better if we had a little cameo from Michael J. Fox, right? Yeah. <laughs> I definitely think Christopher Lloyd would have done it. If he I, yeah. I mean, given the the guest actors they had on Stargate, I I definitely would have expected Christopher Lloyd to show up at some point. But mm-hmm. It would have been funny if they even, I don't think they talked about back to the future like they do in like Avengers in game or something where they talk like about time travel and they're like, that's not how it works. <laughs> I yeah. mean, McKay and Atlanta says, don't even get me started. On oh those yeah. Movies oh, at that's one point. Right. Yeah. 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 So. <laughs> yeah. That would have been fun. No one's mom tries to fall in love with them. So <laughs> call that a win. I bet Daniel no. Jackson's mom might have. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> she was too busy getting crushed by. Yeah. Giant styrofoam <laughs> stones. Jake, how could you, Jake? <laughs> Come on, Jake. <laughs> Come on, Jake. He just we had one job. Hold on to the rope. And so, don't stand stand yeah. under it. Remember, like, don't. Yeah, what are exactly. you doing? Yeah. Maybe in the alternate timeline, Jake did his job. We don't. Yeah, that's know. right. Oh, and see. that's why Daniel Jackson is messed up. 
Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, well, I mean, why he's normal. He, because Catherine Langford never parents, would have, yeah. like, her father never found the gate, so there was never any, like, uh, evidence for his theories like that. So, yeah. She didn't go to weird Abydos and meet the weird oh. Abydosians <laughs> while running from the Nazis or something. I have no <laughs> idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Neither do I. Exactly. What, was, what about Ernest? I guess Ernest Littlefield didn't end up in... Uh... Yeah, he just... You know, Ernest goes to Abydos. <laughs> <laughs> know what I mean? <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> what, what what about the Germans? Did they have a, a alternate language title here? No, everything else really? was just Mobius. Yeah. Hmm. How does the that The French translate? were the only ones. Yeah. <laughs> Mobius, pretty much. Just, yeah. Uh, disappointing. Yeah, Mobius. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> Not to be confused with Morbius. Morbius, <laughs> yes. It's Morbin time. Yep. Here it's just Morbin time. <laughs> awesome. Do you have any other uh, thoughts on this episode? No, it's great. It's excellent way to end a series. Mm-hmm. So much fun. Very well done. You could tell that the people who make this show love the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's great. One of my favorites. I would consider this, if we're going to just call it like a spiritual series finale, I would consider this as good at a series finale as all good things in terms of like yeah doing callbacks and wrapping everything up. That's kind of like my that. my standard for series finales. So I'd, I'd put that up there with this. Well, just wait. It's better than the season 10 series finale. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And unfortunately, better than the Atlantis series finale, too. <laughs> nice. So, so I'm yeah. not saying it's downhill from here. That's not what I meant. I can just, I can just quote yeah. on ahead then. <laughs> Stick with Atlantis. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, before we go, we'd like to take a moment to thank all our patrons who make it possible for us to create the secret of Stargate. Their generous donations at sqpn.com slash give make it possible for us to continue the secrets of Stargate and all the shows at StarQuest. And you can join them by visiting sqpn.com slash give. And be sure to follow the show on Apple Podcasts, TuneIn, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and you can find the video versions at youtube.com slash starquestmedia. And to find previous episodes of Secrets of Stargate and to send us feedback, you can visit sqpn.com slash stargate, and you can email us at stargate at sqpn.com. And follow StarQuest on social media at facebook.com slash starquestmedia or on X at SQPN. And we'll be back next time when we'll be discussing the next episodes of Atlantis, The Siege, Parts 1 and 2. Until then, Jeff Haker, thank you for joining me in sharing the secrets of Stargate. Thanks, Jack. And Lisa Jones, thank you as well. Thanks, Jack. And Victor Lambs, thank you too. Thanks, Jack. And you are a small and pathetic man. Those are my theories on spin wave technology and the effects of anti-gravity and electromagnetism, and you know it. Sorry, I tried to steal them. <laughs> Once again, I'm Jack Berzini. Thank you for listening to The Secret to Stargate on StarQuest. Anyway, I'm sorry, but that just happens to be how I feel about it. What do you think? <laughs>